Don Wade, sports writer for the Daily Memphian, and I am joined by Ben Johnson, first year manager of the Memphis Redbirds, a hometown hero, as it were, grew up here, went to Germantown High School, and now back managing the Memphis Redbirds. Ben, I would imagine that you almost had to pinch yourself when you got this job. Absolutely. You know, to, to get the phone call to interview for this position was really, uh, it hit me like, uh, you know, like no other interview I guess I'd had. So yeah, it was a, it was a pinch me moment to, to get a chance to interview for this and then to actually get the position was really, really, really awesome. Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's okay. talk about growing up here. 25, 30 years ago, Memphis was a very different sports town. What, what do you remember about that? What was it like for you growing up here? Uh, well, starting out, I spent a lot of time at Tim McCarver Stadium out at the fairgrounds. Um, a lot of baseball games there. Uh, also, you know, a lot of time at the Liberty Bowl. My family and I, my father, uh, was something, you know, we, we grew up sports fans. Uh, not only just baseball, football, and basketball, but we spent a lot of time at the wrestling at the Coliseum, too. The wrestling, so, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, Who's yeah. your favorite? I was Jerry Lawler, man. I okay. mean, hands down, the king. All right, right answer. Hands down. Um, still a Jerry Lawler fan, so uh, love to get the chance to meet him one day. Uh, but, you know, we, uh, we spent a lot of time over at the fairgrounds, uh, you know, baseball, football, wrestling. I covered a little bit of the Redbirds at Tim McCarver Stadium when I was first in town, and I remember I, I did a story one time about the, you know, the stadium going away, the new stadium coming. So I mm -hmm. went out to the outfield wall, and you were an outfielder. Of course, you never had to play there, but uh, that literally nails coming <laughs> out of the outfield wall at the old ballpark. Kind of a dangerous place. Uh, I believe you had artificial turf yep. on the infield. Yep grass outfield but you saw a couple of pretty famous people play there too didn't you sure bo jackson came through there you know that was something that uh you know my father reminded me of hey this was one of the best players ever uh so make sure you pay attention to this guy uh, michael jordan also was a player that we came and saw with the birmingham barons uh so pretty cool experience for you know for just a young kid just in love with the game of baseball. So to get a chance to go over there and, and see some really good ball players and some good baseball being played at such a young age kind of motivated me to continue to, to pursue the passion of baseball. Were you there when Bo hit the, the home run that keeps getting longer? I think it's now like 800 feet that well, he supposedly well, hit. <laughs> it does keep getting longer. It wasn't there for that, uh, but I've heard stories about it. And left field loonies, did you ever get out there with the left field loonies? I, I don't think I was of age at that time. <laughs> um, but mostly I spent my time trying to run around, track down foul balls, and, and, and hollering at players for, for broken bats. Um, so, you know, threw out my arm one night trying to, you know, clock the speed pitch. But outside of that, no, just uh, spent a lot of time, you know, tracking down ground balls. I don't know how much of the game I really watched, to be honest with you, you know how kids are. Just, oh, yeah, uh, that's, that's what it is to be a kid at the ballpark, yeah. right? Get a tour of the whole place. Yeah, see it all. And then um, you played two sports in high school, mm -hmm. a Germantown High School, right? And you could have – you were drafted in the fourth round by the St. Louis Cardinals, which I know your dad, Larry, is a Cardinals fan, so that was great for him. But you had the opportunity to go play SEC football. Did, you know, and it was something that I was really proud of because uh, I worked really hard at football too. Um, missed playing the game, uh, but – it didn't take long for me to kind of understand that baseball was a path that I wanted to go up, go down. Um, and then the Cardinals came to me with an offer that my family and I, we just felt we couldn't refuse at that time. So uh, decided to go play baseball, um, took advantage of the Major League Baseball Scholarship Program and then can, you know, started going to school shortly thereafter that. Uh, actually, once I stopped playing the game, uh, decided to go to school online and took advantage of those classes. So uh, the Cardinals were great to me in that regard. They gave me an opportunity to play professional baseball. And they also paid for a good bit of my college. I guess when you were coming up, Ben, there was starting to be some specialization with, with kids in sports, but not like it is now. What Playing football, how did that help you if it did with, with your baseball career? I felt that it made me just a better athlete all the way around and I encourage uh, a lot of the young kids today to continue to play multiple sports just because um, you know there's a different you get stronger you get tougher and and almost maybe a little meaner you know when you're trying to get somebody off of you when you know someone's trying to take your lunch in a sense so I felt like playing the game of football made me a better baseball player just because it made me a little more gritty uh, just made me a little more tougher 
made me a little maybe uh, a little more mentally tougher in, too in a sense so I encourage that for all the kids just to continue to play all the sports be well-rounded athletes and 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 the scout in me knowing that a player hasn't specialized in baseball really excites me knowing that when I can get him to play baseball day in day out I feel like he's really going to improve and develop even more and your dad actually coached you with the East Memphis Tigers and uh -huh. if I'm remembering what you told me uh, previously, he really was not very gentle with you guys when he was pitching batting practice, getting you ready to face some really tough teams. Sure, he would, you know, I remember um, that he didn't hold back when he came to throwing batting practice. You know, he put some on the ball, uh, threw it in there hard. And, and for us, we really didn't quite understand that, you know, as kids that, hey, why is Mr. Johnson or Coach Johnson throwing the ball so hard? Uh, but in the end, you know, he was trying to prepare us for the best players that we would see. So not only, um, not only you know, were we practicing hard and practicing with a purpose to win, but we were practicing uh, to be the best and to beat the best, I guess. When you think back on those days, did it really ever occur to you, Ben, that you would be in the major league someday, or were you just a kid having fun playing the game? You know, I always dreamed of being a major league ball player. I really did, and even at a young age when I was in elementary school, you know, I never forget I was in, I was in going to school at Whitehaven Elementary. I want to say I was either fourth grade, maybe, yeah, I was, believe I was in the fourth grade. And I told my teacher that I wanted to be a major league ball player. It was kind of that exercise, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up? And, and it was, it, and I hate to say this, it was, I was discouraged, you know, to, to do that and to try and maybe, hey, you need to be a little more realistic uh, what your dreams and your goals were. but. At a very young age, I knew that that's what I wanted to do, is be a ball player. Who were your favorites? Dave Justice was a big favorite of mine. Um, but once I kind of maybe understood professional baseball more, and, and once I got into understanding, like, you know, the process and, 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 and how the game is played, Brian Jordan became a clear favorite for me. Uh, Are you he was a Braves a fan? Well, yes and no. I mean, uh, big Cardinal fan, but, you know, TBS is on day in, day out here. Uh, but... I guess I picked up Brian Jordan just because he was a power athlete type guy, and I felt like I could model myself after his type of game. He played football too, right? He did, yeah. He was a football guy as well. And then I think people in this town maybe sometimes don't realize how different the path in baseball is from football and basketball. Because, you know, we see a guy get drafted in the first round by an NBA team, and he's playing right. on opening night, right? right? Or even if you go to the NFL – draft if you get taken in the fifth round there's a good chance you're on that roster just a few months later and sure. you're playing sure but you were drafted in 1999 yes. i believe right uh -huh. fourth round which in case you don't know that is that's like being a lottery pick in the nba to go in the fourth round mm -hmm. in baseball i mm -hmm. think that's a fair comparison but it takes you six years to get to the major leagues and that's like a normal amount of i'm not saying that's a long time sure. that's like a normal sure amount of time ben what was that journey like and were there points along the way I would guess there would have had to be where you you question like should I keep should I keep doing this am I going to get there sure sure well that was a long road um, and and I feel that the reason you know players just in general um, the game of baseball is played differently in college and high school than it is at the professional level so a lot of young players need to understand uh, how to be a professional uh, not just on the field, uh, but also off the field and in the clubhouse. And for some players, that can take some time to transition. I'd never swung really a wooden bat until I got to professional baseball, so that took some time to kind of get a feel for that. Uh, it's a different sweet spot on the bat. Uh, the bat has a different balance in aluminum. So uh, to make that transition, uh, it took me, I mean, pretty much almost a full year to just get comfortable uh, with knowing how to handle a wood bat and and of course you know there were struggles there uh, along the way you know uh, I was a really good football player so I, I kind of questioned did I make the right decision when I'm struggling in a ball when I'm struggling in double a um, and in all honesty there were coaches that throughout the career uh, or throughout my career that really helped me um, just kind of get over that hump in a sense and that's a big reason why I was so proud to become a coach and so proud to get into management and get back on the field because it gave me an opportunity to kind of help these young players that, you know, that needed help just as I did. So, uh, you know, it, it was, there were a lot of, there were a lot of times where, 
you know, yeah, did I make the right decision? Um, but in the end, I knew I did. Um, I had my family backing me, um, and uh, I was just out there working hard day in, day out. And, and fortunately enough, I got the chance to, to play at the highest level. A couple of turning points when you're in the minors that you, you know, once you got used to the wood bat that mm -hmm. you can look back on and say, okay, I, can't, I took a jump here because of this. A big turning point for me throughout, uh, I would say I was in my second year in double A. Um, I was a player who had a lot of tools, a lot of talent. And you'd been traded by this I'd point, been traded, right, to yep, San Diego, yep, yep. your organization. I was. I was drafted by the Cardinals and traded in San Diego in 2000. So uh, the biggest turning point for me uh, in my career was, it was in my second year in double A. Rob Deere, uh, you know, was our roving hitting instructor with the Padres at the time. And just for people that don't know, Rob Deere was a lot like the sluggers of today. A lot sure. of home runs, a lot of strikeouts. A lot of home runs, a lot of strikeouts. Um, and, and not only, and he was a great teacher when it came to not just hitting, but hitting for average, believe it or not. You know, Rob, that was one thing Rob would say. Hit like I'm teaching you how to hit and not how I hit. Because <laughs> they, you know, they yeah. paid me money just to try and hit the ball out of the ballpark. Right. And that was my goal. Um, and that's, you know, that's what he did. He was good at it, played over 10 years in the major leagues. Um, this never happens, but Rob actually, at the end of my second year in AA, Rob had me come stay with him in Phoenix for an off season. This was about a week and a half. And what we did was we built um, a routine for hitting for me um, that, you know, just, I was a hard worker, but I didn't know exactly how to work if that makes sense, you know, and, and, and we find, we, you know, we, we gave my routine, you know, fine detail um, so that I was working with a purpose day in and day out. Um, and, you know, that's something that I'll never forget because he took the time, he took a week out of his off season to have me come in, stay with him and then continue to work every day. Um, and, and not only did I take that with me um, just for that off season, but throughout the rest of my playing career um, and, and, about a year and a half after that, I was a big leaguer. Uh, and it was just because, you know, it was something that Rob saw in me um, and he took the time to help me uh, just continue to develop. So I think that was a turning point in my career. And like I said, he's one of those guys for me that uh, when it comes to, to coaching, uh, he just kind of motivated me to go back and help other players because someone took an interest in me and, 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 and made a difference in my life. Sounded like he gave you the tools to be able to self-correct a little bit Without when a, you got kind of outside your mechanics, maybe gotten a little bad stretch. Sure, sure, and, and, and I feel like that's one thing that separates a minor league player from a major league player, someone who can make an adjustment, especially a hitter, pitch to pitch, um, opposed to, you know, game to game or uh, week to week. You know, you've got to be able to make an adjustment uh, as a hitter from pitch to pitch during the at bat um, and not only you know, not only know how to, but, you know, be able to do so immediately. Uh, and Rob kind of gave me those tools and, and, and taught me how to identify what it was I was doing wrong um, and, and be able to correct that immediately. And that, for me, just kind of propelled me, uh, you know, to the big leagues shortly thereafter that. So let's talk about the big leagues. The, uh, where were you when you got the word you were going up? Uh, that first moment walking into the big league clubhouse, what was that like? Awesome. I mean, it was, I can remember it like it was yesterday. <clears throat> I was in Sacramento, California. Um, I want to say it was maybe mid-June, maybe early June. Um, and uh, the manager, Craig Colbert, I was with the Padres and uh, we were playing for Portland. I was a Portland Beaver at the time. Great place to play in the summer, you know, uh, Northwest, nice and cool. A little cool. less humid than Memphis. Maybe, oh man, absolutely. Time. You know, great place to play in the summer. Um, so we were in Sacramento in the PCL. Um, manager called me into the office and, and gave me the great news. And he told me, you know, congratulations, you've hit the lottery. And, and, and <laughs> that was, that, you know, that was, that's a moment that I'll never forget. And, you know, shortly thereafter, I was flying into San Diego, going to Petco and um, was in a major league clubhouse. And, and, you know, I remember playing, getting my first opportunity to play. We were playing against the Mariners and I went into left field and sure enough, Ichiro was a hitter. And man, I'm thinking to myself, I hope he don't hit me one of those sinker and line drives, you know. He was good are, at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that just are, you know, sinking hard towards the line because right. I was nervous. I mean, I was, I don't know if you remember Trevor Hoffman, 
I mean, obviously you do. Right. I mean, he was he was a closer great at the closer. time. Yeah, great closer. I go in to play left field as a defensive replacement as my major league debut while Trevor Hoffman is taking the mound and Hales Bells is coming on. I'm talking this place is rocking. Really, <laughs> really cool. Um, great experience, but I mean, I was nervous as all get out and, and I wouldn't say I wasn't able to, I wouldn't be able to handle, you know, the ball that was hit to me, but luckily I got out of it with, you know, without being tested that day. Uh, got my first start the next day and then got my first major league hit off Jeff Facero, um, which was kind of funny. I m ran into Jeff last year and got him to <laughs> sign a baseball for me. So, oh, that was nice. Yeah, huh? I mean, he was, <laughs> I don't know how, you know, I don't know what he thought of the gesture, but he did anyway. So it was kind of cool to get a chance to kind of go full circle and see Jeff and, and um, you know, get a chance to just kind of go over that experience uh, that changed my life with him. Right. Yeah. What about your first home run? First home run. Oh, man, I um, was in Petco Park, and I, I I should know who the pitcher was, but um, I'm drawing a blank. But man, I shredded it. I mean, I just <laughs> absolutely clobbered this heater, belt high, middle of the plate, and I hit it out of Petco, where a lot of guys weren't hitting balls at, at that time. You know, so it was a day game. Ball was kind of got a chance to to get one up in the air, and I absolutely shredded this homer to center. Yeah. What kind of all the things that, that go around being a ma major leaguer, there's a, you know, the kind of one of the speeches in Bull Durham, Crash Davis is telling the guys who've, you know, the young minor league guys who've never been up there and he had his 23 days or whatever, you know, you never touch your bags. It's, you know, five star hotels, you know, laying out the whole, whole thing. What about that part of it for you? Was a, a lot of that experiences that you'd never had before? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, there's kind of a, a saying I like to say, and it's oh, the major leagues is the only place to play. I mean, it's the only place to play, you know, and you wish a lot of these guys who put in all that hard work and time uh, at their craft can get an opportunity to play in the major leagues. But it's, I mean, everything's better. I mean, the food tastes better, the water tastes better, you know <laughs> what I mean? It just seems as if, uh, you know, they cater to you in every way. Um, so that you can focus on exactly what it is you're there to do, and that's to be productive on the field. And so you had parts of three seasons with San Diego and then the New York Mets and yes. the majors. So did you get around to just about every major league park that was uh, open at the time? Pretty much all the National League parks. Uh, a couple, let's see, I played in Texas in the American League. I uh, played in Detroit in the American League just during interleague play. Right. Uh, but for the most part, you know, a lot of my games came played in the, in the National League there. Okay. Yeah. Any place, uh, Wrigley Field or someplace, Dodger really Stadium cool. that stands out? I mean, Dodger, Dodger Stadium was, it was pretty awesome, you know, pretty great place to play. Wrigley, you know, with all the history there. I would say Dodger Stadium was the loudest place I've ever been in. Really? Um, yeah. Just, this is before they leave the game in like the seventh inning well, to beat the traffic. Yeah. Yeah, in a sense. Um, <laughs> that's exactly right. That's exactly right. But we had a back and forth with those guys. We were, you know, division rivals being in San Diego. Um, and we were going down the stretch in a sense, I guess, um, you know, to, to, to win the West. And kind of, I, I'll never forget, I want to say we were, we were up late in the game by three runs. And then they'd hit a couple homers to tie it up. We'd come back in the ninth to hit an to hit a homer to take the lead, and then they'd hit a homer uh, to tie it up, and then another homer to win it. I, it was something kind of crazy, but it was the loudest place I think I'd ever been, and it was unfortunate to be on the side that we were on, but it was really cool experience to just kind of get a feel for the energy that uh, a stadium and the fans can bring. I mean, it was really, really, really cool. I know your dad, being the Cardinals fan he is, one of the things he was happy about when you got this job, working for the Cardinals, managing the Redbirds, is he wouldn't have to be divided. I, I always yeah, got the yeah, sense yeah. that when San Diego or the Mets played the Cardinals, he was for you first, but it hurt his heart a little bit to be against the Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, it's, and that's, that's, it's almost not right, right, no? <laughs> you know, I mean, I felt, and you could kind of feel that. I was like, Dad, you need to straighten up here, man, you know? <laughs> We're card, hey, you know, we're Cardinal fans growing up, but right now you're a Padre fan, you know. Right. Um, and it's kind of funny. I had an uncle. We were playing. We were playing. 
you met Tony. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Um, we we were playing the Cardinals uh, at Bush Stadium. It was Game Three of the Division Series playoffs. My uncle came to the game in Cardinals gear. My own uncle came to see us play in Bush Stadium. Wow. Yeah, uh, cheering for the other team. So that's kind of how deep our red you know, lies within our blood. You know what I mean? We've been Cardinal fans for a long time, but I couldn't even get my family to switch when I was playing against the Cardinals. That's loyalty, I guess. Yeah, I guess guess that's loyalty. To a certain degree, Yeah. you know. uh, It took me a while to start talking to him again. (laughs) Uh, Now he's back on the pass list and, you know, here in Memphis. But, you know, that was (laughs) – I I kind of call some – some grief from the, you know, from the players and, and the players, you know, I would say, you know, just in good fun. But, I mean, the past list, the, all the families sit together, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, when you've got a guy cheering for the opposing team and your family's in your family pass list section, that can kind of, that gets back to you pretty quickly. Yeah, you got to explain that Yeah, you've got to explain that somehow. And and wasn't fun trying to answer for that. You, um, you know, obviously managing a AAA club, you're dealing with guys going up and down all the time. But you know what that's like first firsthand. You were up and down, and how tough is that when you know you you feel like a major leaguer one day or sure. one week, and then you're back in the minors, and then you're back in the majors. I would think that would kind of play with your psyche a little bit. It did for me. It did for me, and just because you you question yourself, am I good enough? You know, especially when you go up and you play well and you and you're productive and you help your club win. It, you know, you start asking the question, uh, what do I have to do to stay here? Um, you know, and then you kind of start looking internally as like, do I need to do more? You know, how can I do more? And in some cases, when you try and do too much, you know, it works against you in baseball. Uh, with that being said, these players now um, are really smart. There's not much that they don't know, especially when it comes to the – They how, get the business of the yeah, game they un- better than back in your day. Absolutely. That's a good way to put it. And and they understand, um, you know, what options do and how, you know, those options are used, uh, you know, no matter sometimes how well they're playing or, you know, uh, if they're if – they're, they can be on a tear – at the major league level, but if they're a player that has control ability and, and they can go up and down and, and the team won't lose their rights, you know, then they kind of understand that that's just part of the process and, and part of what they're doing. Um, and, and these players more so today uh, know more about that, that process uh, than ever, I feel. These are smart kids. I know when we talked uh, in the off season after you got the job, uh, you mentioned that you were really looking forward to that first time that you got to tell a player of yours that for the first time he was going to the major leagues. And now you've been able to do that several times. W- what's that been like for it's you? Great. It's great. It's uh, great. You know, just recently, the most recent, uh, Tommy Edmond, uh, for the first time, you know, it's, it's I, I'll never forget the smile on his face. I mean, I, I mean it stands out. Uh, it's kind of ingrained in my, uh, you know, just kind of ingrained in my memory in a sense. You know, Tommy, he's someone who's worked really hard. Uh, he's just been a, he's a baseball fanatic. Uh, his dad's a baseball coach. So, you know, it, it doesn't just stop with him. You know, he's making an entire family proud. Uh, so, to get an opportunity to, to give a, a young man that information that will change his life and, and, and make a lot of his dreams come true is, is really, really special. Uh, and I and I try and be as creative as I can be, you know, when I'm relaying that information. Sure. But uh, you know, there's times where it just comes out. Hey, man, congratulations! You know, go give them. You know, go get them, kid. To kind of take it back where we started, are there because you coach third base as part of your job as manager of the Redbirds? Are there times when you're standing out there, Ben, and you're kind of looking around? Maybe you're seeing kids running around after a foul ball at Auto Zone Park. You kind of Flash back to that kid at old Tim McCarver Stadium? Not so much, you know, not so much. Um, just, b- and because when I'm managing third base, you know, there's so much going on, especially sure. in a National League game. I'm trying to process the information on, on what our next move is going to be. Um, so I, I wish I was, I was that relaxed over there. I have a tough time being that relaxed. I would say that's maybe uh, something that I, am always working on it's just kind of hey take a deep breath uh, just kind of let the game come to you but 
for the most part, I'm kind of trying to stay as dialed in as I can and, and think about our next move. Yeah. What would you be doing if you weren't doing this? Great question. Great question. And that's hard to answer. I, I, I would be involved in baseball in some, you know, capacity, I feel. Um, it'd, be hard to, it'd be hard to really put my finger on it, you know. I mean, I was a scout prior to doing this, but if, if just if I weren't in professional baseball period, it'd be, it, it would, I, that's a, I, I couldn't see myself really not being in the industry. I can't change your oil. You know what I mean? I don't know how to work on an air conditioner or anything you right. know, along those lines. Maybe, maybe down the path that my father went down. You know, there uh -huh. was a, he was a, a, a lineman. Right. You know, who well, climbed. it worked out for you. Sure. Doing this, and we're thrilled that you're back in Memphis and managing the Redbirds, and that you've got the whole family, you know, on your side, wearing the right colors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At all times, Ben. Thanks for being here, and best of luck the remainder of the season. Thank you. I appreciate it, Don. Thanks for having me.